This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about Bitcoin miners leaving Bitcoin. We talked about the Bitcoin halving in yesterday's video, which I'll link to in the description notes below. It's coming approximately April 20th, 2024. And it's called the halving because this is when the block subsidy, which is awarded to miners, will get cut in half from 6.25 Bitcoin per block to 3.125 Bitcoin per block. Bitcoin miners will continue to earn transaction fees for every transaction that they package up in a block. And today's video was inspired by a couple of comments in the comments section. Tony Gray's 2905 saying our miners will shift their rigs to other projects. In other words, they'll stop mining BTC and possibly mine BCH or BSV. Anonymous here saying, so what happens to Bitcoin Cash, BCH, if half of the BTC miners switch their hashing power to BCH? to earn more cash after their Bitcoin reward is cut in half. I don't think this commenter realizes that the Bitcoin halving has already happened for Bitcoin Cash. Now, Bcash is a failed fork of BTC and BSV is a failed fork of Bcash. It turns out that BTC is the winner. And that's not just my opinion. That's also the market's opinion. Currently, the market cap of Bitcoin, the real Bitcoin BTC, is approximately one3 $1.4 trillion. Bcash, the market cap, is just a small fraction of that at about $13 billion. And BSV, the market cap, is even less than that, another order of magnitude less at approximately $1.87 billion. And we've seen both of these collapse against Bitcoin over the past five years. This is Bcash collapsing against BTC. This is BSV collapsing against BTC. So this is why I say these are failed forks, in addition to the fact that you have some very nasty scammers attached to these coins. For example, for BSV, we have Craig Wright, who recently lost in a UK court and was shown not to be Satoshi Nakamoto and is now as it befits a scammer, has had a worldwide freeze put on his assets by a UK judge. If you enjoy watching my videos, I just ask you to please help to support the channel by hitting the subscribe button, clicking the like button, leaving a comment, and sharing this video with a few friends or family members. So this is what Bitcoin mining rigs look like. They're also known as ASICs, and they're basically very specialized computers that can only do one thing, and that is SHA-256 hashing and the major SHA-256 hashing coins or BTC, Bcash, and BSV. So these machines don't have a lot of use apart from mining these coins. Now, one way of comparing these different coins is by looking at the hash rate of the respective networks. But before we do that, let's just review what SHA-256 is. You basically have an input, you put it through the hash, and you end up with an output. And if you change any part of the input, so for example, I take away one of these letters, the output's gonna be completely different as we can see here. So this is what Bitcoin mining rigs do. They do this sort of calculation again and again, very, very quickly. If we take a look at the hash rate of the Bitcoin network of BTC, we can see that the network is doing these hashes. All the mining rigs combined together are doing these hashes at an incredible rate, six, 636 exa hashes. If we take a look at what that number is, here's the thousands, here's the millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions, 636 quintillion hashes per second. If we take a look at the chart, it's a very nice natural chart. We can see the crash here when China banned Bitcoin miners. It's now just a tiny blip on the chart. At the time, this felt like a really bad thing that was happening, but the Bitcoin hash rate has obviously recovered and gone on to explode higher. So that's what the hash rate of a very healthy network looks like. If we take a look at Bcash's hash rate, we can see that's really gone nowhere over the past call it six years, and it's stuck at a much lower level at three exahashes per second, as opposed to 633, uh, 636 exahashes per second. And again, it's not that nice upward sloping uh, curve. In, in other words, it's just completely range bound, as is BSV's hash rate, which is even smaller. It's only 673 uh, peta hashes or peta hashes. If we look at the conversion rate for peta hashes, we can see that 673 peta hashes is only 0.67 exahashes. So again, it's on a much smaller scale than Bcash or Bitcoin, the real Bitcoin, which are both operating uh, at full exahashes. Now, another thing to pay attention to, BTC blocks in the blockchain are already showing the beginnings of a robust transaction fee market. And this requires that blocks be relatively full. And if blocks are not full, then you end up with the lowest 
fee transactions, one sat per V-byte, and very little transaction fee revenue for the miner. So if we look at Bcash, we can click on any block here. We'll just click on the most recent block, which only has uh, 79 transactions. It looks like Bcash has already gone through the halving. So instead of 6.25 Bcash, it's now 3.125. And the total fees, the transaction fees, are only 0 0.00152, which is just a dollar. So the subsidy, the block subsidy, 3.125 plus the transaction fees gets you to 3.127 Bcash, which is just north of $2,000 per block. So this is not a very profitable blockchain to mine. And if we take a look at Bitcoin, the real Bitcoin, for example, we can click on the most recent block here. We can see the total fees are 0.176 Bitcoin, about $12,000. And then the subsidy 6.25 plus the fees, the block subsidy plus the fees gets you to 445 thousand dollars and we can see there are many more transactions in spite of having larger blocks no one is using bcash there are very very few transactions per blocks 18 79 36 293 if we look at bitcoin we have two three even four thousand transactions per block and those transactions come with a robust fee market when we saw bcash's mempool the transaction fee rates were something like one sat per v-byte here we can see we're much higher levels 15 or 16 sats per v-bytes has been much higher earlier in the year so here's the question for bcash and bsv supporters what's going to happen as the block subsidy gets halved again and again every four years for btc for bcash and for bsv as the block subsidy that 6.25 bitcoin gets halved again and again, miners will become increasingly dependent on transaction fees for revenue. And this is part of the plan. This is how Satoshi designed BTC. The problem for Bcash and BSV is they both have big empty blocks that don't encourage a robust transaction fee market to develop. And these chains really aren't used that much anymore. Because of this lack of transaction fee revenue, there's actually zero risk that BTC miners leave Bitcoin for Bcash or BSV. In fact, I would expect the opposite to happen. Miners will continue to leave Bcash and BSV and instead point their hash to the BTC network, the real Bitcoin. And that's going to leave Bcash and BSV with even less security than they have today, which will then encourage even fewer people to use them since they offer less security and they also offer slower final settlement. So for example, Bcash is 198 times slower than Bitcoin. It takes seven days and 21 hours approximately to have reasonable assurance that your transaction will not be reversed by rewriting the chain. By contrast, Bitcoin just gives you the same settlement finality in an hour, approximately six blocks, six 10 minute blocks. So when they say that these other coins are faster, they're really not faster when it comes to settlement finality, which is what really matters because when you do a transaction, you don't want it to be rewritten and excluded from a block down the line. You wanna make sure that's stuck there in the blockchain forever. And it's funny, Bcash has become such a loser coin that its settlement finality is actually below Dogecoin, which has even less use than Bcash. But this is how the market, the market's actually pricing meme coins higher than a failed fork of BTC. BTC, the real Bitcoin is winning and will continue to win the money game against fiat and against other cryptocurrencies. So I'd advise you get on the winning team while you still can. You'll be much happier. You'll sleep much better at night. I'd encourage everyone to stop looking for quote unquote, the next Bitcoin. That's because BTC Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. And as Michael Saylor likes to remind us, there is no second best. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.